Welcome back to another segment of the best monotype team for every game series. Last time I covered all the flying type teams. This time we're doing the opposite of flying with the best ground type team for every game. The ground type is such an excellent typing for anyone's playthrough, as it's one of, if not the best offensive and defensive type there is. On the majority of teams I see, whether it be in-game or competitive, there is a ground type Pokemon present. For my research, there is an abundance of ground types to use in pretty much every Pokemon game, and I have to say, there are some solid options in pretty much every aspect, aside from a few circumstances with limited options. There will be a case where only 5 Mons are on a team due to limited options, but even then, 4 out of the 5 Pokemon are very solid. Before we hop into these teams though, here are some ground rules I'd like to cover. I have been waiting to say that for so long, you guys have no idea. These teams will be grouped up by original basis. Fire Red and Leaf Green will represent Kanto, although these teams can be used for Red, Blue, and Yellow, and Let's Go. Platinum will represent Sinnoh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Johto, Black and White and Black and White 2 will be their own separate things, X and Y, Kalos, Oras, Hoenn, Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon, Alola, Sword and Shield, Galar, and then Legends Arceus, Heesweet. These teams should still work for Gold, Silver, Crystal, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and in some cases, Diamond and Pearl, and BDSP. No version exclusive Pokemon unless there is a similar choice in the other version. For example, Mandibuzz and Braviary. No trade evolutions until Legends Arceus because of the new mechanic. No egg moves, etc. All the Pokemon featured on these teams are also available pre-post game. I will also not be providing locations for all the Pokemon, but I might sometimes. I will not be showing what each Pokemon does well against, nor suggesting movesets. There will be a few move suggestions, just not full-blown movesets for each Pokemon. If I did all that, this video would go on for a pretty long time. Like usual, remember to leave what typing you guys want to see next down in the comment section below. The typing with the most upvotes will be the one I cover next. Anywho though, let's begin with Kanto. Okay, starting off with Kanto, we got Marowak, Nidoking, Nido Queen, Doug Trio, Graveler, and Rhydon. These mons are also in no particular order. With Cubone, it can be found at the midway point of the game, and it actually has an all right level up pull with some desirable stab. And then of course evolving into Marowak at level 28. Bone Club and Bone Meringue are more desirable than Sand Slash's level up pool. I don't really have to explain Nido King and Queen. They're both coverage machines and can both be fully evolved before facing off against Misty. Use the Dig TM on one of your Nidos, or if you do not want both of them on your team, you could use Sand Slash instead. But with that limited move pull, do you really want to? Next is Duck Trio. It has an all right level up move set for Stab. You will be stuck with Magnitude until Earthquake at level 51 though, or you could use the Earthquake TM you get from Giovanni if you do not want to wait. Graveler is after, and out of all of these, it's the earliest to obtain. If you do have a means of trading, of course use Golem. But even without Golem though, Graveler still has an all right level up pool, even learning Earthquake at level 45. 95 base attack is also not so bad on a not fully evolved Pokemon. Lastly, we got Rhydon. Right off the bat, Rhydon will not have a ground type attack until it gets Earthquake, which is unfortunately not learned until level 58. So I would just use your Earthquake TM on it don't use it on Duck Trio. The cool thing too is that Rock Slide can be learned via Move Tutor in the Rock Tunnel, so I would use Rock Slide on it instead of Graveler. Rock Tomb could be an option for Graveler though. This speed drop can be nice in some instances. Personally, this is one of my favorite teams I have made for this video. Pokemon Platinum delivers us some fantastic options. Torterra, Gastrodon, Garchomp, Mamoswine, and Hippowdon. Right out the gate, your starter is available as a future ground type contender. Torterra's primary grass typing in tandem with its secondary typing of ground is such a fun combo for a Sinnoh run. Torterra has a decent stat spread and a fantastic level upset. I say fantastic because it gets Earthquake at level 32. Aided with that base 109 attack stat along with its bulk, Torterra is going to be a blast to run on this team. 
Up second is Quagsire slash Gastrodon. I do prefer Quagsire over Gastrodon because it gets Earthquake via level up. The Gastrodon can also be used too if you prefer the earlier encounter and don't really care about the learn set. Gastrodon and Quagsire are both relatively balanced wall Pokemon with all right offenses. Those HP stats will help you bulk some juicy hits too. What's neat about these two mons though is of course their awesome type combo you always hear me rambling about, only having one weakness to grass. Gastrodon will have the edge over Quag in the water aspect at first, but Surf can solve all those issues at the midway point of the game. Third is Garchomp. This is pretty self-explanatory, and I'm not gonna waste a lot of time speaking on this ground type god. Pokemon Platinum did throw you guys a bone though, and gave access to Gibble right after obtaining the bike and getting cut at the Wayward Cave. Gliscor is a returning member from the flying type teams, and I will say exactly what I said then. You can evolve it pretty early in the game. The Razor Fang can be found literally south of Veilstone City, and boom, you can have a Gliscor by the time you get to Maylene. Second to last is Mamoswine, and though it is a little late towards the game, its amazing type combo of ice and ground is totally worth it. Earthquake is learned at level 40, and Stab Ice Fang can be learned at level 28. All you have to do is relearn Ancient Power, level it up once, and boom, you're golden. Lastly is Hippowdon. This thing is a defensive monster. It has a great level up pool, and its coverage is also pretty nice, having access to all the elemental fangs, alongside Crunch, which can be learned at level 31. You know, for the past few videos, I have been constantly complaining about Heart Gold and Soul Silver and their stupid shallow pool of Pokemon availability. For the ground types though, we don't have that issue. Graveler, Quagsire, Nidoking slash Queen, Dugtrio, and Mamoswine. All these mons I've discussed already, but I'll cover Dugtrio and Mamoswine real quick. I actually did not know that in HeartGold and Soul Silver, Dugtrio can be obtained on Route 48, which is in the Safari Zone in Seenwood City. It can be captured at the midpoint in the game, which is pretty solid. So I actually applaud HeartGold and Soul Silver for doing this. Nice job. We can get Mamoswine in HeartGold and Soul Silver, but we can't get Togekiss. Weavile, or Gliscor. I honestly don't get it. Like Platinum though, you can get Palaswine towards the late part of the game and level it up with Ancient Power. And from there, you will have this Ice Aged Manny to utterly destroy Lance. I'm surprised that this team is as powerful as it is. I'm also glad I don't have to rant as much about Johto's mistakes again. In the intro of the video, I mentioned a part of the vid where there will be a team of five. This is it with Pokemon Black and White. Black and White has a limited pool of mons because you're only stuck in to Generation 5 Pokemon only. But regardless, this team isn't too bad. Seismitoad, Excadrill, Crocodile, Golurk, and Stunfisk. First and foremost, let's hop into Seismitoad. Temple can be found very, very early in the game. And as it evolves, it of course gets better, getting equipped with that awesome type combination of water and ground. Like with its water ground counterparts I mentioned earlier, it's very similar to them, being relatively balanced walls with bulky HP and a halfway decent level up pool. Its ground pool could use some work, but Gen 5 pulls through and gives us unlimited TM usage. The crappy thing though, is that the Earthquake TM is post game, so you are stuck with Bulldoze, which you can get from Clay. Next is Excadrill. If you've played competitive, especially in Gen 5, you know how much of a beast this thing is. It's Garchomp's Gen 5 cousin, practically. I wish Excadrill had decent still moves, but in all honesty, with Earthquake learned at level 36, that doesn't matter all that much. Also, for abilities, don't worry about it. You don't need sand for Excadrill to completely wreck black and white. Crocodile is one of those mons where everyone has at least used it once for any of their playthroughs. I don't care what Pokemon game you've played. Its dark type pull is a little more appealing than its ground, but it can still learn Bulldoze via TM, and Earthquake by the time you get to the Elite Four at least. It also has a decent coverage pull. Just know which TMs are post game and which aren't. Also, run Moxie. For Stunfisk, I don't think I've talked about Stunfisk for a really long time on this channel. If you remember what video was the last I mentioned it in, let me know. Its typing is... interesting? 
Look at those weaknesses and you'll see why. Its electric type does cover this ground type's water weakness though, so I guess I can applaud it for that. Its coverage pull isn't the worst, but like always, be aware of the post-game TMs. Post-game TMs tick me off sometimes. Lastly, we got Golurk. I absolutely love Golurk. Great early level up pool, and it also gets Earthquake at level 45 if you chose to wait two levels to evolve Golit. I'd say it's worth it. You can also capture it at a pretty good point in the game. With that, that's black and white. Though there may have been limited options, the team actually came out not too bad. For black and white too, the team is fairly similar, albeit with a few differences. Excadrill, Crocodile, Flygon, Claydol, Gliscor, and Mamoswine. Excadrill and Crook I've talked about already, so I'll just skip over those two. Trap Inch can be a tad difficult to level up, but a certain YouTuber who is currently playing through Black and White 2 has been having a blast with it. So, shoutouts to Jade. Flygon may not be Garchomp, but it's pretty solid nonetheless. Its level up pool is actually pretty good, learning Bulldoze at level 21, and even Rock Slide for coverage at level 25. At level 45, the evolution cycle will be completed, and your awesome green dragon will come equipped with 100 speed and attack. You will also have Earthquake at your disposal this time. Oh, never mind. It's post game again. Come on, man. For its dragon pull, its moves are pretty shallow, but dragon moves aren't really necessary for that much of the game. Have fun with Dragon Breath on Draden. Regardless, Flygon is fun to use. With Claydol, you have the interesting type combo of Ground and Psychic, which can help out against a trainer like Marshall. Its Ground Stab Learn set isn't bad, as it gets Earth Power at level 40, and you could use Bulldoze until then, or keep it if you like the speed drop. Psychic-wise, it gets Psybeam at level 13, and Extra Sensory at level 28, so that's not bad at all actually. For a wall Pokemon, its speed is 75, which is pretty dang good so it will be able to outspeed a chunk of the games. Coverage-wise, it's just like any other Psychic type. Just, as always, post-game TMs. Glyce score, unfortunately, can't be obtained until pretty much right before the Elite Four. Unless, of course, I'm wrong, and you can find a Razor Fang earlier. Let me know in the comments below if I am wrong. Please do. Even though it's near the Elite Four, Glyce score is still worth bringing up here in my opinion. Mamoswine is semi-similar to Gliscor, being caught as a Piloswine in the giant chasm and doing the usual evolution method of ancient power. Still, Ground Ice is a solid combo and can help against Iris' team as well. Kalos, like usual, in these monotype team runs, shakes things up, and this time, literally. With Crocodile, Steelix, Garchomp, Nidoking, Quagsire, and Mamoswine. This team is made up of straight up power. And I just want to say, Gibble can be found right before the fifth badge, so perfect timing against Clement. The rest of the team can also be found at very reasonable times within the games, with the latest being Mamoswine. But even then, you still have five out of the six team members for a very good chunk of the game. The issue is the early game. Sandile can't be obtained until Route 9, so you will have to use Diggers B until then. Hey, Mystic Dude, you make it sound like that's a problem. Well, it doesn't get huge power, and that is a problem when you only have 56 base attack. All these mons I know I've talked about already, but let me show you something really cool. If you've seen the best in-game trades video, then you should already have an idea of what I'm about to talk about. Simply fish up a love disc with the old rod and trade this dude for a fully evolved Steelix. This dude right here, is definitely something else. Moving on to Hoenn, we got Swampert, Graveler, Camerupt, Flygon, Claydol, and Donphan. Swampert is one of the best starters out there, having pretty balanced stats and the great typing of water and ground. The Swampert line is pretty solid for at least half the gym leaders in Hoenn, and you get it right from the get-go as your starter. Camerupt, despite the slow speed, its fire type might actually help you out at some point. What I also love about the Camerupt line is its level up set. Ground Stab and Fire Stab are both looking fantastic. Other than that, I've already talked about the rest of these mons. Trap Inch's Evo journey will be a long one, but it'll be worth it. The last member, Donphan, is also right before the 7th gym in the Safari Zone, so not too late, 
but it could be better. Donphan also has a decent level up pool, learning Earthquake at level 43 with Thunderfang and Firefang for coverage as move relearns. Its stats are also very neat, being pretty physically defensive while also hitting very hard. We're in July now, and I would love to go to Alola. Along Duck Trio, Mudsdale, Palisand, Crocodile, Garchomp, and Whiskash are the members for this tropical ground type team. I'm just gonna say, the team looks decent on paper. The downside is that this is going to be a challenge, especially in the early game. Against Lawless Trial and Malice Trial, I can see this being relatively challenging. I don't want to deem it impossible because there's going to be some challenge guru out there that could eat this for breakfast. Most of the mons here are going to be obtainable around the midpoint of the game, being on Akala or Ula Ula. If you are able to pull off this challenge though using this team, let me know in the comments below. But now let's get into a couple of the mons I haven't covered yet. Alolong Duck Trio is similar to its Cantonian counterpart. The only difference is it gets equipped with the Steel type. In a way, this is kind of good, because the Steel type does have a fair amount of resistances, and being neutral the grass could help against Totem Lorantis. That cast form though, you gotta be careful against that. Another thing that kinda irks me is having to use Whiskash over Gastrodon, because Gastrodon isn't available until Pony Island. In my opinion, Whiskash isn't as good as its other ground typing brethren. It could be if it didn't get Dragon Dance via an egg move. Bottom line, good luck with this team. You're gonna need it. For Ultra Sun and Moon, it's the same team and the same rules apply. Good luck. For Sword and Shield, the team is gonna be Excadrill, Crocodile, Nidoking, Garchomp, any of the water ground types, and Mamoswine. Just don't use Whiskash. This team is powerful. However, some of these mons are from the DLCs. These mons are obtainable before the post game though. If you do not have the DLC, find a friend. Pokemon Home also exists. I would say the vast majority of you watching have the DLC. The DLC in these set of games, especially Crown Tundra, comes packed with like level 60 plus Pokemon. But you can go to the Crown Tundra in the beginning of the game. If you're able to capture some of these level 60 plus Pokemon, lay eggs of them. It's difficult, but not impossible. This is also why Pokemon Sword and Shield are my least favorite Pokemon games in the entire franchise. Legends Arceus becomes much easier to obtain Pokemon. Anywho though, the mons for Legends Arceus are Torterra, Gastrodon, Ursaluna, Gliscor, Garchomp, and Mamoswine. This team is filled with some amazing Sinnoh quaking power, and now Ursaluna steps up to the plate. Evolving it can be a little bit of a chore, but it's not that bad. 140 base attack is nothing to sneeze at. You could run a bulk up set with it and add some sick coverage to the mix. I wish it had better normal stab that didn't consist of recharge and recoil damage, but it's ground stab more than makes up for it. Plus, I think most players use it for its ground type options anyways. Other than that, I've already spoken about all the rest of the mons already. This team should be more than ready to take on Volo and the other threats with its mixture of defensive and offensive power. Well, that wraps up the best ground type team for every game. What'd you guys think? Are there any Pokemon you feel I may have missed? What's your opinion on the Alolan ground type team? Are you up for the challenge? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. 